Okay, so I'm making a short video about credit cards, specifically credit cards for travel. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I happen to see Fresh and Fit making a video about credit cards. And to be perfectly honest, I don't think they spent enough time talking about some of the better specials that are out there for 2023. So I'm going to make a really, really short video. But before I get to travel, I wanted to point out something that I put into my community chat a couple of days ago. Microsoft Xbox has a new credit card. As you can see, it's the Xbox MasterCard. Now, before I even read any of this, chances are you probably haven't heard of this because some of you are PlayStation 5 owners and you don't have Xbox. I've been with Xbox Live for like 12 years or something. So, um... In order to qualify for this card, first of all, you have to be an Xbox Insider, which means that there has to be an app that you've downloaded onto your Windows, PC, or your Xbox. And uh, when you download it, even if you don't have an Xbox, Windows Gaming allows you to qualify for it by using the Insider app. You have to go into Microsoft's store that's at the bottom of your uh, taskbar, Windows 11. All you have to do is basically type Xbox Insider and it'll take you to the app and you can download the app. So, um, that's that. But uh, they have this MasterCard. As far as I know, there's no annual fee on it because obviously they, they're basically selling this to kids and young adults. Or they're at least trying to because you can't even qualify for this unless you're already 18 or unless your parents do it for you and they make you a licensed user or whatever. So it says apply now after your first purchase, earn a bonus of 5,000 card points, $50 value and three months of Game Pass Ultimate for new members, right? So it says, this is the Xbox MasterCard, currently only available to Xbox insiders that have joined the Xbox MasterCard preview. Introducing the no annual fee Xbox MasterCard, earn card points with everyday purchases, redeem card points on games and add-ons at xbox.com. Uh, earn card points on the things you love, 5x points at the digital Microsoft store, so they give you five times card points on eligible products. Most likely it's games and accessories, probably not even games, but it's probably more tuned towards accessories because that's where they make the majority of their revenue. They make less on games than they do on controllers and controller parts and peripherals. It says 3x on streaming services. Earn three times card points on eligible streaming services, uh, services like Netflix and Disney. Um, three times dining delivery services. So if you're the type of person who's literally... I have a cousin who basically sits at home, plays a lot of video games on the PC, and orders out a lot. Well, this is designed for somebody like him. Uh, DoorDash and Grubhub, you're getting 3x card points if you use those. It doesn't say Uber Eats, but I can't imagine that they would have left Uber Eats out of it. So, um, but it does specifically say Grubhub and, um, what is the other one? It says Grubhub and, uh, what's that other one? Um, I forgot. I gotta go back to it. So, long story short, oh yeah, DoorDash, right. Uh, so the long story short, the last one is it has 1x everyday purchases, which is pretty much what most cards have. You get either one times a point or you get 1.75, which is the case of Capital One Venture, which I personally like using. And um, it says earn 1x points on everyday purchases. So basically, this card has no travel rewards. The only eating or dining rewards that it has is if you're ordering food to be brought to you. And similar to the Apple card, this card is specifically designed for people who purchase a lot of stuff off of Microsoft Xbox. Now, me personally, I can't imagine anybody who's buying enough stuff off of Xbox to really warrant getting this card to try to maximize on these points. Because this is how they trick you. What they do is they try to off, they, they give you a huge number and they say, yeah, you're going to get like 30x points on this. The problem is, it's chances are it's something that you're not going to order regularly. And I don't buy games from Microsoft regularly. It's like once in a blue moon does something come out that I'll buy. Like the last game I bought was Mortal Kombat 
uh, uh, won. And then before that, the last game I bought was on Steam. Um, and it was like the Mega Man uh, ZX... Uh, it was like the Mega Man ZX collection or something like that. And they, you know, they were trying to get me to buy... I think it was another game. They were trying to get me to buy... Uh, what game was that? They were trying to get me to buy Fallout 76 and I didn't buy it. Even though it went on sale for like $10 or something. So the bottom line is, yeah, everybody's pretty much trying to offer these points. And I had done a short video about the Biden administration that was literally trying to get rid of rewards points because they called them untaxed kickbacks, which basically that's what they are. And they were also trying to interrupt uh, most of these credit cards and how they're charging fees to people who are literally maxing out credit cards and not paying the bills which I have a problem with. So the thing about it is a card like this is very similar to what Apple did because at the end of the day, what you need to understand is all of these companies are trying to get you into subscriptions. They want you into subscriptions because a subscription means that you can't simply walk away. It's the same logic with the gym. Most people have a gym membership that they're not always using and taking advantage of. That means that you know, they're making their money off of you. And in the back of your mind, you know that you would be going back and forth to the gym, but the chances are you're either tired, fatigued, whatever it is. So as long as you're built into a subscription, they constantly getting paid and whether you're benefiting from it or not, but they're always going to make their money. Everybody's trying to get you into a subscription. Some of these new cars are trying to get you to subscribe to uh, features that are built into the car already, but they don't activate until you actually subscribe to them. Uh, BMW introduced that idea about making you subscribe for heated seats. You had other companies uh, trying to make you subscribe to XM Radio, or you try have other companies trying to make you subscribe to... Um, internet television for the car like uh some of these new cars have internet tvs built into them smart tvs and you have to pay in order to have the 4g or the 5g connection so everybody's trying to get you into a subscription now goldman sachs learned the hard way that they didn't want to be in the credit card business and they'd gone into it with apple for apple card and they learned the hard way that they didn't want to do that. Because, see, Goldman Sachs is the type of company that makes a lot of money at once doing big deals. They don't do small deals, and they're no good at customer service. They don't understand or they don't have a setup to deal with customer service on the small scale. They're not a credit card company, per se. They're not set up for that. MasterCard and Visa are set up for that. So... Xbox will probably have an easier time dealing with MasterCard. And uh, I think the bank that they're using is Barclays, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me look through it. Because I had looked this up before, but I think it's in the terms of service. Oh, yes, Barclays. I was right. The Xbox MasterCard is issued by Barclays Bank. See, Barclays... And MasterCard as a transfer system, they are used to dealing with customers and they're used to customer service. Goldman Sachs is not used to dealing with small customers. They're used to dealing with big customers who are, who are moving lots of money in around at a time. So the bottom line is they are right now trying to sell off the Apple card to American Express and uh, they don't want to do this anymore. And they've lost a lot of money on it. And I think in the long run, it's been good for Apple because basically what Apple did was they made it easy for you to finance their products using their card. So that means that, uh, you know, they can offer you discounts and benefits and rewards and stuff using their card. And that gives them more control over the ecosystem. And the Apple card itself becomes an Apple product and it works, you know, with other Apple products like the Apple Watch and it works with... Uh, what is it called? It works with the iPhone, it works with the iPad, and so forth and so on. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Maybe you are, not, are an Xbox user. Maybe you're interested in getting the Xbox card. I don't know. 
Me personally, I don't know if this is the type of card I'd want to get. I I certainly would probably get it just for the novelty of it, but I don't think I would rally. I, I, I think the only way I would use this card is I would charge Microsoft Office and Xbox Live or just Xbox Live to it annually. So that means that every single year I would pay just one time the uh, fee for Xbox Live on this card. So that means that for the entire year, I would only have one payment to make on it, and that would be for 60 or $70 for the entire year just to keep the account open. And um, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe I would get it. If they offer it to me, I'll probably sign up for it. But that's what I would intend on doing with it. I would make my Xbox... Any purchase that I would do with Xbox, which is very, very few... I would do it using a card like this, and that's it. So um, this is the Expedia website. So as you can see, I was looking at uh, the cost of flights between John F. Kennedy Airport, and this one, Bob, is Bora Bora, but this is for spring break. So I'm not going away for spring break. I'm going to go away for July. So um, I was thinking about July to August, or and I was just basically checking to see how much the prices are right now and whether or not they've gone up or down. So in this case, uh, to go from John F. Kennedy Airport to Bali or Depensar Airport is right now, they're talking about $6,793. And this is a business class flight. So if you're looking at the prices, if you look at, say, Singapore Airlines, it's $6,793. If you do one stop and you get rid of Singapore Airline, then it shows you a different airline. Uh-oh, it shows, what is this, $6,088. And this shows you EVA Airways. Now, EVA Airways is Taiwanese, I believe. So this is right now technically the cheapest this is 25 hours and 50 minutes, four hours and 55 minutes in Taipei, which is uh, the, the layover, I guess you could say. And they're saying it's $6,088, you know, before tax. So they're basically saying you take off at 1.25 a.m. from John F. Kennedy Airport, 15 hour, 44 or 40 minute flight. Um, on a Boeing 777, so I'd be in business class, obviously. Um, I'm pretty sure Eva Airlines business class is not as nice as Emirates. And unfortunately, it's a 777 rather than an A380, so I'm already not happy. But um, you land at 5.05 a.m. in Taipei. Then you have to wait four hours, 55 minutes in Taipei. And then from there, you have to fly on an A330. Oh, God. Five hours, 15 minutes. Now, I think I made a video of an A330. The business class section on an A330 is not that nice. So basically, the reason why this is so cheap is because you're flying on two... Well, the 777 is a big plane that can pretty much go the distance, you know, 16 hours of flying. It's just that the 330 is a small plane that is not really that nice. Now, if you look back and you go to, say, Singapore Airlines, if you look at Singapore Airlines right there, uh, Singapore and China Airlines, Singapore Airlines, chances are they're probably using the A350 ultra long range. So if you look at Singapore Airlines, it says 1030 to 950. This is a 23 hours, 20 minutes. And then they're saying that um, you're flying on the A350-900, which is a long-range business class. It's a big plane. I, I flew one business class to go to Philippines, and I made a video about that. The A350 is a lovely plane. It's not as nice as the A380. It's not as big. It's not as spacious to walk around. It doesn't have the open bars and stuff. But... It is comfortable, and you do get good meal service, and you do get all you can drink and everything. It's just not as luxurious as the A380. Then there's the Boeing 787-9. Now, that business class, I'm not happy about. Boeing sucks. I'm sorry. If it's Boeing, I ain't going. Boeing sucks. And the reason why is because their business class is usually two by two by two, and if you don't want to sit that way, you don't really have any choice. Furthermore, their 
uh, windows have a push button which auto dims them, but you can't fully dim them because the assholes at Boeing decided that they weren't going to put shades there. They were just going to put electrochromatic windows. And I think that was stupid. And I've heard some people very upset about it, some people complaining about it, especially if you're sitting on the side of the plane where the sun is and you have no idea where the sun is going to be in relation to the plane. Be, you know, but it, I, I just think Boeing, they just mess everything up. Now, originally, I would have preferred to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to take uh, Emirates. But as you can see, all right, this is Emirates. They're charging a lot more, 7812 And if you look at their flight service, chances are the planes are an A380 to Dubai because it says Dubai, yeah. Chances are you fly A380 to Dubai, and then from there you fly a 777 to get from Dubai to Bali. And that's 9 hours and 10 minutes. And believe me, the 777 is not that comfortable if you're flying 9 hours. Now, the A380 is super comfortable for 9 hours. But they don't seem to have a direct service that takes you with the A380 directly to Indonesia. And my guess is it's because the airport runways are probably either small or it's because they don't want to service A380s at that airport. That's my guess. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to downsize you from the quad engine jets like the 747 and the A380. They're trying to downsize you into the A350 and the 777 and eventually it'll be the 777X. So if you know anything about airplanes, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't know anything about airplanes and flying and piloting and aviation, then you know you don't know anything. You don't know what I'm talking about. But if you do know what I'm talking about, then that means that you've probably flown as nicely as I have. Now, me personally, I was thinking about going when I go to Bali, whether or not I should go to Singapore first. And if I go to Singapore first, um, chances are it'll be a A350-900 that flies from JFK all the way to Singapore. And then you'll take the smaller plane, go from Singapore onwards to Bali. So I'm still evaluating flights and um, still preparing you know, the logistics of the trip. But because I've been on all of these airplanes, I pretty much know exactly what to expect. It's business class, so I pretty much know exactly what to expect. Um, I, I haven't been to these countries' business class lounges yet, so I don't know exactly what to expect in that respect, but, you know, we'll see, and obviously I'll make videos about it. So this is what I really wanted to talk about. This is an article written by uh, Thomas Donaldson, updated October 25th, so it's relatively recent. And this is about best travel cards of 2023. Now, I'm fairly certain I've, I did a video about uh, credit cards. I, I know I did one about business credit cards. And then there's uh, the travel credit cards. And I know I mentioned travel credit cards. Um, basically, the way I do business is I personally use Capital One Venture, which is pretty much one of the better travel cards there are. I use Capital One Venture One because there's a difference. And I think maybe Capital One should have named these things a little bit better. But Capital One Venture One is a no annual fee travel points credit card. So basically the way it works is on every single purchase I make, I get 1.75 uh, points. Now, right now, I'm close to 100,000 points. And the way that works is that basically every single, how should I say, every single thousand points, I believe, is a dollar. So if I'm at 100,000 points, then that really means that I have $1,000 cash. So right now I'm at 95,000 points which means that I'm at $950 of, you know, real world money. When you use a travel credit card, and I've said this before, I'm going to make this quick, but when you use a travel credit card, the travel points that you've built up are usually only really good to use for travel expenses. Now, what I like about the Venture One card, and pretty much all the Capital One cards do the same thing, 
But what I like about this card is there's no annual fee for one. So I use it for everything. I use it to purchase gas, groceries, uh, whatever you can think of. Stuff off of eBay, whatever. But what they do is when you redeem the points, they issue it as a credit to your statement. So that means that if I were to go on vacation right now, and I have a thousand dollars worth of points, which is a hundred thousand points. Let's say that I stay at a condo in Philippines or a condo in Indonesia, Bali, Indonesia. And let's say I stay there for one month and it's going to cost me five hundred dollars. So that would mean that when I cash in the points, I can either cash them all in at the same time towards my entire travel expense. Or I could just cash in $500 worth, which is 50,000 points, and I could just pay off the condo stay for that month. Because when you travel, the credit card recognizes what every single purchase is. So if you're traveling and you, you know, pay for an air ticket or pay for a cruise ship ticket or you pay for a hotel stay, all of that is recognized automatically as travel. Now... Whatever your balance is, Capital One issues those points as a statement towards your credit card, which automatically wipes out or cancels out the debt that you owe for the uh, travel expense that you incurred. And I really, really like that. And that's the reason why I continue to use Capital One Venture Card. Now, I noticed today that there's another card, and I'm looking at it seriously because I'm probably going to get this card. Wells Fargo has what's called the Autograph card. And the Autograph card, you can earn 30,000 bonus points if you are spending um, on travel and you're doing it um, right, like basically right now. So it says the offer from Wells Fargo truly takes the cake for being versatile. The Wells Fargo autograph card allows cardholders to receive points back on things that really add up, not just travel. Earn three times points on restaurants, travel, gas stations, transit, popular streaming, uh, services, phone plans, plus earn one X points on other purchases and pay no annual fee. The points that card holders receive on every purchase can be redeemed for travel, gift cards, statement credits, or millions of online stores and such and such. It says if you're planning, now this is the part that caught my attention. It says if you're planning a big trip soon, you may qualify to receive this card's generous welcome bonus. It's 30,000 bonus points when you spend $1,500 in purchases in the first three months. That's a $300 cash redemption value. Enjoy 0% intro APR for 12 months from account opening. Uh, that's 20 to 29% variable APR thereafter. Now, first of all, if you know me and you watch my show, if you want to call this a show, I pay off my credit cards every single night. Now, what I like about this is that if I were to get this card right now, there's no annual fee on this card at all, as they show. And uh, it says credit score needed is excellent. I'm there. I'm an 850 credit score. But the important thing to me that I like about this is it says there's no a there's 0% interest, basically, for 12 months from the account opening on purchases. Now, after that, they're going to charge your APR. Now, this is one of the reasons why I like going shopping on Black Friday, because let's say I go out to Home Depot and I bought stuff using the Home Depot uh, credit card, right? Black Friday is usually the best time to buy your appliances because you could buy like what a washer, a dryer, a stove and this, that and the other. But you're not going to pay interest as long as you pay it off within 12 months. Now, 12 months from now would be November of next year. So the issue basically is that you could either pay it immediately, you could pay it over time, or you could wait till tax season, you could use your tax return and pay it then. Bottom line is you're not going to pay interest on it. Now, I'm planning two trips. I want to go to uh, Bora Bora, and I also want to go to Indonesia, Bali, Bali, Indonesia. So my thinking is that if I were to get this card, I can get this card, and I can immediately, right around Black Friday, which is November 26th, I can charge uh, my entire trip 
to this card, qualify for their 30,000 points, and not have to pay interest. Only You only have to pay the minimum fees and whatnot, which I wouldn't do because I would pay it pretty much right up. I have the cash. But I would be basically getting, as they said, um, the $30,000 bonus the 30,000 points, I should say, which comes out to $300 cash. Basically, with most of these points, what you do is lop off the last two zeros, and that tells you how much uh, cash it equivalent is. So I'd be getting a $300 discount, but the more important thing is I'd be able to pay for the trip without having to pay interest, and I wouldn't have to use the money that I have right now to do it. And that's the important thing. And right now, bottom line is, I like to hold on to cash, especially in times of uncertainty. And we are absolutely in a time of uncertainty right now. I mean, I don't know what you call this. We've got two different wars going on. We've got an incompetent president. Um, we've got recession. We've got stagflation. I consider this an uncertain time. So the bottom line is, this card... I actually just might go after and get. There's no annual fee. And for that first year, there's no interest as long as you pay it off within that 12 months. And I can easily pay it off within just this month if, you know, if I were to open up this card. So I think I'm actually going to apply for this. And this is a Visa card. This is not a MasterCard. So that is absolutely worth looking at, especially if you're planning on doing the same thing. Like if you want to take, I'm thinking about going away uh, July and August. And uh, if you're thinking about doing a vacation anytime soon, like if you want to go away spring break, I have some friends who are planning to go away to Tanzania, Africa, uh, Zanzibar. They're planning to go to Zanzibar and they're planning to do it during spring break. I'm not going with them because I, I like to stay away for longer than that. But the bottom line is, if you're planning a trip like that, this Wells Fargo autograph card will give you one year, no interest, and a $300 credit. Now, as you know, I only fly business class. A business class ticket to go to Indonesia right now is about $5,900. Basically, it's closer to $6,000 when you factor in the tax. So for me to use this card... To buy that trip, there's no interest and there's $300 reward, but I have the cash to pay it right off, so I wouldn't be paying interest at all. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So this is the card that I, this is the, re, this card right here is the reason why I made this entire video. And I, I wanted you to know that, you know, about that card. Now, very, very quickly, they also have, the Capital One Venture card. This is not the one. This is the Capital One Venture card. I really think they ought to change this card's name to make it so that it's, you know, the two cards aren't so similar. But the bottom line is this card gives you more points, but the problem that I have with it is it has an annual fee. So the annual fee on this card is $95. And this card gives you two miles per dollar instead of my 1.75 that I get on my Capital Venture One. And it says five miles per dollar on hotels and rental cars booked through Capital One Travel. That right there is the deal breaker for me because their website for travel is terrible. I like to use Expedia. I like to use, um, well, specifically Expedia. But the only other thing I'll use is ASAP tickets, ASAP tickets. And the reason why is because they got me a really good deal when I did business class on Emirates to Maldives. They got me a really good deal. They got me flights that hadn't even been really listed yet on Expedia or Travelocity or anything like that. And I was very happy with the service. So I would use ASAP tickets again. Um, but I have to say, first of all, I'm not feeling the annual fee. I don't even want to pay you $100 a year. I don't want to pay that. And then on top of that, um, you know, and it's not a bad card. It's just that I don't think that it makes sense to pay $100 a year just to get two times points. 
and be offered five times points to use a website that I don't want to use. So I don't think that I would use that. I, I wouldn't want that card at all. The uh, Venture One card is enough for me. I don't like the Capital One Venture card. Now, Discover also has um, their Discover It miles. And from what I read, there's no annual fee on this card. But they, as you can see, it says they, they give you 1.5 miles on every dollar purchase. Now, I get 1.75. The other thing, it says what really makes this card stand out is the stellar first year bonus. Discover will match all the miles you've earned at the end of your first year. For example, if you earn 35,000 miles, you get 70,000 miles. That's $700 towards travel. Now, for me, $700 is nothing because my airfare alone is going to be uh, closer to $6,000 plus tax. So $700, that's, you know, for if, for that amount of uh, airfare, so you figure, what is it, six thousand? let's say $6,000 times 1.5, right? Uh, six times one and a half. Um, I just don't feel that it's worth it. In that case, I actually like the Wells Fargo offer more because the intro APR is... Now, on this one, Discover is offering 0% intro APR for 15 months on purchases. Then after that, it says 17.24 uh, to 28.24. The reason why they never go up to 30% is because that would violate the usury law. So this Discover card is actually not that dissimilar from the Wells Fargo card. Um, it all depends how you feel about Discover, though, because if you move around certain places, some places, you know, Discover is accepted nationwide, just like Visa and MasterCard. It's actually American Express that a lot of stores don't want to accept. So Visa, Visa and MasterCard, you never really have a problem with. So this card is actually offering a very nice... Um, it's offering a very nice intro bonus, as you can see. So they're they're one point five times. But see, I would I don't care about their how many um, you know points they're offering simply because I'd be using my Venture One card at any given time. Oh, and in fact, what are they saying? They say they offer one point two five miles. Um, so there you have it. Discover offers a very nice deal. Wells Fargo offers a very nice deal. Now. Wells Fargo, once again, uh, the base rate that they're offering you on every single purchase is it's 3x on restaurants, travel, gas stations, transit, popular streaming services, and phone plans, plus earn 1x points on other purchases. So basically, it looks like they're focusing on the 1x points unless you're doing something very specific. Now, I would be using my Capital One card more than the Wells Fargo card. So for the most part, the only thing I'd be interested in is the first year, no annual uh, interest rate for that first year, uh, plus the $300 back. Now, Discover, by comparison, their uh, offer might actually be better because they're offering to... Um, they're offering to basically double what you spend and give you that back in points. So I'm going to have to do the math on that, and I'll have to do that very carefully. But those two cards are very, very nice uh, in that respect. Now, there's also the Chase Sapphire card. I don't like that because there's a $95 annual fee. And then there's the Capital One Venture X Rewards. Now, my biggest problem with that card is the annual fee is, is very high. It's $395. And then the other problem I have is, yeah, they give you $2, uh, I should say, 2 miles per dollar on every purchase, 10 miles per dollar if you're booking on their website, which I've already told you I don't like using their website. It's slow and it doesn't work very well. It's clunky. Um, if you're using their website internationally, especially, it's very, very difficult to use it. And I've tried, uh, Expedia has a much, much better interface and it's much, much faster and the computer seems to work better. But the big thing that I have a problem with is $395 as an annual fee. That's like a non-starter. Now, if I was traveling constantly instead of like once or twice a year, 
it might make sense. If I was using their website to get that 10x return, it might make sense. But other than that, no, nah, to, to me, it doesn't make sense. And also it says get 10,000 bonus points or 10,000 bonus miles equal to $100 towards travel every year starting on your first anniversary. $100 a year? You're giving me $100 a year, but your annual fee is $395? Um, no, nah, I don't. And, and then it starts after the first year. So that means for the first year, you don't get that $100. I don't think that makes much sense. And then they do have a sign-up bonus. They say 75,000 miles when you spend $4,000 on purchases in the first three months. Now, yes, that would work out for me getting the uh, 75,000 miles, which basically is $750. But that's only initially if you get the car and you start spending on it immediately. But the problem with that is, even though I know that my first ticket, you know, business class on Singapore Airlines, yeah, that would cover the 4000 in purchases. But the thing about it is you're still stuck paying that $400 fee every single year. I don't think it's worth it. So, again, the Wells Fargo card and the Discover card seem to have the best. They seem to have the absolute best um, rewards if you're planning on traveling anytime soon. And once again, I've said this before, the best time, if you're planning on going on vacation next year and you're planning on going on an international vacation, the best time to shop for a ticket is coming right up right now. It's Black Friday, which is the day after Thanksgiving. Um, just like last year, I booked, uh, what was it, Emirates, uh, Maldives, um, what was it, um, round trip business class. And... Um, the bottom line is, if, if you're planning on doing a vacation and you know that it's going to cost you and whoever you're taking with you, if you know it's going to cost more than five or $6,000, then this Wells Fargo card or even this Discover card, either of these may be for you. So there you have it. I said I wasn't going to be very long. I have no idea how long I've been. But the bottom line is, I, I, I think I've covered um, this entire subject as much as possible. And um, I don't know how you feel about it, but that's what I'm planning to do. I personally believe that I'm going to get this Wells Fargo card. And I also think that when I'm offered the uh, Xbox sign up, I may get the Xbox card as well. And that's that. To be continued.